Hello and welcome to Beatia, the German engineer, explains oxygen not included. Today we are going to talk about infinite storages. We have of course liquid, gas and solid and of course also in that particular order. We are going to go through those three different kinds of storages and I will make sure that by the end of the video you know how to build each and every one of those. So let's just jump right into that. Okay, so here we are. Let's take a look what we have here. Ignore everything that is on the left side right here because that is not needed. That is literally just a power source and some sort of water source. This here is the actual infinite storage that we are going to talk about. So how does it work and why does it work? We have here all around manual airlocks. Those are currently built out of copper ore and what they're actually built out of really doesn't matter. What is important though is, is what is in here. Let's take a look. We need one piece of gas all the way to the top and the rest here needs to be filled up with liquid. That can be done very easily by just filling it up and opening up this particular airlock right here. As long as this one here is open, all the gas can escape. You just fill it up all the way until it is in this area right here. Then you close this door, you open up this door and fill up one more tile. Then you close the airlock here on the top and whatever gas you have in here, it doesn't matter if it is oxygen, if it is carbon dioxide, if it is hydrogen, it literally does not matter. Also, the amount does not matter. What matters is that there is something in here. So currently we have oxygen in there, but I just replaced it with chlorine so we can see it a little bit better. So down here we have our water. Out around here we have our normal atmosphere, which is usually oxygen, I mean preferably at least, unless you have it built somewhere where you don't want your dupes to breathe. And then up here we have some sort of gas. So let's take a look. If we go all the way down with the speed, we can go into here and we can turn this pump here on. And speed it up just a tiny little bit until we actually see some water coming in. There we go. And now when we take a look, we have 10,000 kilograms or 9,000, between 9 and 11,000 kilograms of water per tile already in here. And we can fill it up much, much more. Basically all the way until the kilogram number gets so big that the game cannot handle it anymore and it crashes. I mean, that is the end game. <laughs> At some point, the game will not be able to handle it anymore. But this is how this here works. On the bottom, we just have two pumps. You can theoretically build it one lower. How many tiles you have in here really doesn't matter. You need more pumps? Not a big problem. Just build more pumps along here. As long as you have one tile around the liquid vent here on the top that is made out of gas, it will work. And just to show it off, we're going to turn these two here on. And when we take a look in here, we've gotten 10 kilograms of water out per side. And we can do with it whatever we want. Since I don't have any infrastructure here, we're just plopping it down here on the bottom onto our neutronium floor. This here is the first version of how you can build an infinite storage. Pretty simple and straightforward. The reason for the airlock is that airlocks for I don't know exactly what reason do never break under pressure. We just gotta live with it. Manual airlocks it is. And here we have our second version of the infinite storage. Uh, the only difference is we are not using gas. So again here we have our liquid vent on the top on the north side if you want of our infinite storage over here we have it on the bottom or the south side of it and here we have instead of a gas a liquid and the liquid needs to be heavier than water crude oil is the number one choice if you have it available but you can also use other stuff but i would strongly strongly recommend crude oil it just works without a problem so why and how does it work if you take a look into our overview here all these airflow tiles here are being treated as oxygen, as a gas, and gas cannot break. Therefore, also an airflow tile cannot break. Why do these here work in general? Well, the crude oil is above the liquid vent, so the liquid vent sees a pressure of 300 kilograms. Because it's crude oil though and not water, it throws it into the next available tile. It cannot throw it into any of these tiles here because all these tiles here are full with airflow tiles. The next available tile is this one right here. And therefore the game does not calculate how much is in here. And from here just distributes it out endlessly. It's the exact same principle as we have over on this side here. Literally the same thing, just with a liquid. Let's take a look. If we turn this here on and we run the game, we should, set some, we should see some water coming in. Let's see, there it comes. There was already a little bit in that pipe. Let's speed it up a little bit. And even though we are already at 8,000 or 9,000 kilogram roughly, we are still pumping in water like there is no tomorrow. And that's exactly how that should be. We can also turn these two pumps here on and we have the exact same result as we had on the other side. We can come out here with two times 10 kilograms per second. And if you want more of these here, you can just build more. Extend this side here and plop another one right here, another one right here, another one right here. And you can do this into the other side basically as long as you want. 
the only thing that's important is that you have this build here in the middle it's pretty easy and pretty straightforward to build not a big problem just dump a little bit of crude oil in here close it off and fill it up with water or any other liquid that is lighter than crude oil which is probably something that I should mention. It doesn't only work with water. Water is just an example. You can put in here whatever you want. With gas, literally anything, any sort of fluid. It literally does not matter. As long as the gas that you have in here does not freeze. That would be bad. But other than that, you can put in here whatever you want. Time to take a look at a gas storage. So let's hop over here. And right here we have our gas storage. Also this one here you have probably seen. It works with four gas vents on the bottom that have about 600 grams of water. That is my personal sweet spot that I prefer right in front of it. And on top we have two gas pumps and you start this entire thing here with a vacuum. The only thing that you need to make sure is that only one element comes in here. In my case, hydrogen. I currently already have 9,999 kilograms of hydrogen in here per tile. And down here, I just built another infinite storage with another 9,999 kilograms in it. That is just to basically show off and fill this one here up. Pretty simple and straightforward. The good thing is gas pressure never breaks any tiles, so it can be built out of whatever you want. I personally always use insulated tiles. That's just force of habit. And yeah, that's basically how that works. You also need to make sure that your gas pumps here are built out of a material that works with the temperature of your gas. So currently my gas is at 27 degrees Celsius, so it literally doesn't matter. I could build it out of copper and it wouldn't matter. But if you have something hotter, like let's say from a hydrogen vent, you cannot use copper, of course, or your gas pump will break. You may also want to cool it down because you need to make sure that your water down here does not evaporate due to the heat. Also very important. But that is just something that you need to customize to whatever need you have. So let's turn it on here on the bottom and let's pump some extra gas in there just to make sure it still works. And of course, we are pumping even more gas in here and drastically more gas. We can see that this here shows us a few error messages every once in a while, but that is absolutely normal. There's nothing wrong with it. We are pumping tons and tons and tons of gas in there. 500 grams per second times four makes two kilograms per second. In here, I have two pumps. Those two pumps are hooked together. Let's turn them both on. And that is for an easy reason. The reason is that an insulated gas pipe here can hold up to one kilogram at a time. And that's exactly what I want to pump out here. Could I extend it? Of course, I could just make it longer in any direction as long as I want. Not a problem whatsoever. And currently, I'm just venting it out here into space. Again, this map is completely empty, so it literally doesn't matter. And that is literally the basics of how this here works. How would you fill this here up? Uh, the easiest way to do it is to build uh, these here seven tiles long, so three more over. Then put a get bottle emptier down, put 200 kilograms in here and let a dupe on the second tile mop three times. Once the dupe mops three times, it is roughly about right. You may have to fine tune it a little bit, but you just have to do a tiny little bit of math here to make sure that you have roughly 600 grams of water per your four tiles right there. A little bit tricky sometimes, especially when your temperature is extremely low or extremely high, but it's really not that complicated. And over here we have our solid storage. This is what that should look like. So up here on the top, we have four automatic dispensers that all go down into one hole. Down here on the bottom, we have pneumatic doors. The left and the right is set to no entry for any dupe, and the middle one is set to left and right. That one is perfectly fine. So how does it work and why does it work? First of all, the automatic dispenser here needs to be set to sweep only. That is highly important, otherwise it will be an endless loop and the dupes are going to refill this thing forever. You want to set it up to basically anything you have that is not outgassing and that is not very hot. For example, if you have a volcano and you have some obsidian and that obsidian is at 1800 degrees Celsius, you do not want to drop it in here. You definitely don't. You also don't want to put any polluted dirt in here or like I said, anything else that outgasses any food. None of that kind of stuff should end up in here. Only the kind of stuff that you don't need right now. For example, I have some salt here, some iron ore, some sedimentary rocks, some copper ore, some sand, some fertilizer. All that stuff can go into here. So let's spawn us a couple dupes all around here and they should theoretically, as soon as I give the sweep command, start sweeping up the stuff and put it in here and we're going to drop it nicely all straight down here. That's literally how it's going to look like. So let's speed it up for a second. They're putting more and more stuff in and we're dropping it, we're dropping it, we're dropping it. Not a big deal. Let's speed it up even more. Now 
and now we have everything in here and we have this post of our dupes let's take a look into the decor overlay you see this here the total decor is at negative 111 yeah that is the problem and this here just accumulates and the decor is getting worse and worse and worse and we don't want any dupe to get in here so how do we get stuff out here let's take a look first of all in sandbox mode we're gonna build us here a little bit of a path and we're gonna spawn us a dupe or two that's gonna be fine and then we're gonna leave sandbox mode and we're just gonna build really let's see here anything that's made out of something that is let's say here iron ore like a manual generator we're just gonna plop a couple of those down here it doesn't matter and now our dupes are coming in they don't have to go in there they can just grab it out of here and they go around it over the top so they are a little bit slower because they have to go over top but in reality they're not touching that bad area here with the bad decor that is the nice thing about it and we can't just store everything in one tile uh, let's stop this nonsense here let's cancel all of this here go back into sandbox mode and get rid of our dupes here there we go now that looks halfway decent again so why are we doing this here in the first place well if you think about it each one of those uh, little pieces right here has a temperature and that temperature has to be calculated between the tile between the background between other things that are right there so we're going to plop it all into one spot and the temperature will over a very short period of time equalize and it increases your frames per second it is very very useful in late game and as a matter of fact exactly the setup here i am going to implement in my let's play in my main base very very soon just to gain a few more fps out of it yeah that's how it works it also is of course useful because all the stuff is in one central location so you can for example build a tube access right here something like this here transit tube here transit tube there and then come all around the base to make sure that your dupes have really quick access to the stuff here they can grab it back into the transit tube and go wherever they have to go that would be something that would be very useful here but I think that's it for today. That's all I've got. If you have any questions, either join my Discord channel and ask me or my community directly or leave it in the comments down below. But with that, I say thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video. And as I just said, don't forget to comment down below. And with that, I say thank you and peace.